What's up guys, I'm James from The Psychedelic Investor. Today we're going to be talking about MindMed's plan to end the opioid epidemic and revolutionize the pharmaceutical industry in the process. Of course, we'll also discuss how investors can benefit from this. Now before we begin, if you enjoyed our content, invest in the channel with your like and subscribe. Over time, you'll see your investment grow as we continue to bring you essential information that you need before you invest in companies like MindMed. Before our planet was dealing with a pandemic, another hidden epidemic was ravaging North America, the opioid crisis. In the United States alone, in 2018, 69,000 people died from drug overdoses, with 70% of those being opioid overdoses. For the same year, an estimated 2 million people in America had opioid use disorder. Now, without diving too deep into the causes of this epidemic, a large part of the problem is people becoming addicted to legal opioids they received from doctors to treat pain. For example, an estimated 10.3 million people misused prescription opioids in 2018. And a quick note for my Canadian audience, these trends sadly exist in Canada also. And the heartbreaking trends have only accelerated during the lockdowns. We don't yet have countrywide data on how bad the opioid epidemic has accelerated in 2020, but we do have studies looking at specific geographic locations. For example, one study showed that from March to June of 2020, non-fatal opioid overdoses instances in a Virginia emergency room more than doubled from the same time last year. And a study from Ontario, Canada showed that in the first 15 weeks of lockdown, opioid deaths increased by 38%. So regardless of the specifics, the opioid epidemic is clearly becoming more severe, and this is destroying millions of families and causing carnage across the continent. Despite said carnage, there is sadly no truly effective way of treating opioid use disorder. Our most effective methods are forms of rehab and social pressure. Alternatively, the patient can be prescribed an opioid and then wean themselves off of it over time. Now obviously there are some issues of treating the disease with more of the disease, and it's important to note that whether through the drugs or rehab, a patient's addiction isn't cured. It is only treated and managed. Even if a person never does opioids again, they may live with the detrimental effects of addiction for their whole life. Importantly, the treatments are not that effective either. About 40 to 60% of people who seek treatment for opioid addiction relapse, and that is if they complete a one to three month stint in rehab, which most non-rich people can't afford to do. So taking a step back, we can see that there is an obvious problem here, looking for a solution. Tens of thousands of people a year die from opioid addiction, and our pharmaceutical industry's best answer is, let's give them more opioids, put them in treatment centers for three months, not actually cure the disease, and then maybe almost half of people who can afford this will remain abstinent from opioids. So, whoever can bring a more effective solution to the table will both improve the lives of millions of people and make their early investors lots of money. So this is where MindMed steps in. For those that don't know, MindMed is a company working to alleviate mental health disorders like anxiety, depression, ADHD, and yes, addiction. For addiction, their solution is a drug called 18MC, a proprietary derivative of the extremely hallucinogenic drug, Ibogaine. Now, Ibogaine has been shown to have a significant effect on treating addiction, though different studies have shown varying rates of success. One study, for example, showed that a year after undergoing Ibogaine treatment, 20 to 50% of the people remained abstinent after a year. So, as you can see, it is clearly not a magic bullet. Though, the rate for Suboxone, a prescribed opioid to help wean you off of other opioids, one year after patients stop taking it, is only 8.6%. And, when combined with aftercare and therapy, Ibogaine treatment is much more effective. Also, the jury is still out on how much Ibogaine should be taken and how many times a year a patient should undergo Ibogaine therapy. A Brazilian trial has shown that multiple Ibogaine treatment sessions combined with psychotherapy has a much greater effect on helping patients. And though we are talking about the opioid epidemic, it is also important to mention that there is evidence that shows that Ibogaine has a great effect on methamphetamine use disorder. One doctor reported a 70-80% to 80 success rate with effective aftercare, though if the user returns to the same environment as before, they were much more likely to relapse. So it's important to mention that there are a couple problems with using opioid to treat dependency. First and foremost is the extremely intense, day-long hallucinations that the drug causes. Second, is that many studies show that Ibogaine's treatment success rate is comparable to current methods of treatment, though again, this is after only a single dose of Ibogaine. Multiple doses throughout a year may be better. Finally, the jury is still out on any potentially negative side effects. 
First, there is very little literature studying the side effects, so any data we are working with is limited and incomplete. But of the data available, there is some evidence that ibogaine, among other issues, may have negative cardiac effects on some people. With 18MC, MindMed claims to have solved the problems associated with ibogaine treatment. First and foremost, MindMed says that 18MC does not cause hallucinations, while keeping the same healing benefits. Now obviously if this is true, eliminating the day-long intense hallucinations will significantly lower the barrier to getting treatment. Furthermore, MindMed also claims that 18MC does not carry with it the same cardiac risks that traditional ibogaine does. So again, this eliminates a barrier to use. Compared to traditional medications to treat opioid use disorders such as suboxone and methadone treatment, MindMed argues that their drug attacks a core issue of opioid addiction, dopamine spikes and withdrawals. They say that 18MC regulates dopamine levels to eliminate severe dopamine spikes. So just to recap, if 18MC is shown to be, once it passes through the FDA hurdles, as effective as ibogaine at, and traditional treatment methods, while not having an accompanying hallucination or cardiac side effects, it will be a major tool for a society to beat the opioid crisis we find ourselves in. Again, I do not expect this to be a miracle drug. Individuals taking this treatment will still have to make an effort to better their lives, and if they return to the same setting after taking 18MC, many will be likely to relapse. But we don't need a miracle drug right now. Anything that is better than current methods will save thousands of lives a year. And if MindMed can do that, then they will already be winners, regardless of how their stock price reacts to them disrupting the addiction treatment market estimated to be valued at $31 billion in 2025. And as a side note guys, MindMed didn't actually invent 18MC, and it's not all that new either. The compound was invented in 1996 by a research team headed by Stanley Glick and Martin Kuhn. By 2002, a company named Savant HWP was testing the compound, but they struggled to get the millions in funding necessary to drive the testing process forward. After years of starts and stops, in 2019, the compound was bought from Savant by MindMed, where it currently resides. And MindMed is completing the work started nearly three decades ago. So, when can we expect to see results? Well, unfortunately, not anytime soon. The process to get a drug approved for use by the FDA is a long and arduous one. MindMed is currently in Phase 2A clinical trials with the drug, which is expected to finish around July 2021. After completing this, assuming positive results, the company will have to complete Phase 2B in three trials before ultimately filing with the NDA and having their drug accepted. This, if all goes well, will be completed by July 2024. So realistically, we are not looking at a commercialization phase of this drug until at least 2024, maybe 2025, which is why I say time and time again that any investor in MindMed has to be in it for the long term. Developing these medications will take a significant amount of time, and any movement in the stock price that isn't based on trial results is pure speculation. The market is not good at thinking long term, it focuses more on short term financials, which is why MindMed is so undervalued at the moment. And this means that if you have a longer time horizon than the market, and of course if MindMed is successful in developing 18MC and other medications, there is a massive opportunity to create real wealth for yourself through MindMed. Though again, this is not risk free and should not be construed as investment advice. Getting back to their phase 2A trial, we are waiting with bated breath to see the results of that next summer and you can be sure that when they drop, we will cover them here. So what does this all mean? Well, first and foremost, we are going to have to wait for results. I know, I know, I know. Waiting sucks. But it's the way of the world. Second, if MindMed is successful, they could help potentially tens of thousands of people a year. More than any monetary gain either they or their investors receive, this is the important part. They could potentially help end our opioid epidemic and ease the human suffering throughout the world. Returning to my investment philosophy of invest in the world you want to see, a world with an effective treatment for addiction is a world I want. And if it makes me a fantastic return on my investment, well that's just cherries on top of the cake. Nevertheless, we will briefly do some back of the napkin math for how much this will be worth to investors should it work. So, we know that the addiction treatment market is set to be valued at $31 billion by 2025, around when this drug should reach market. If 18MC is successful, let's say they take 5% of said market. And to be clear, I want to be conservative with my estimates, it's better to underestimate than overestimate. So, 5% of $31 billion is $1.55 billion. And let's give a 10x revenue to market cap ratio. That would mean the company would be valued at around $15.5 billion just based on 18MC. Forget their LSD 
treatment to treat anxiety or ADHD and all the other trials they're doing. So, with their current market cap of around $940 million, that would be a more than 15x from current prices. And guys, that's simply spectacular. Again, this is using conservative estimates of them only being able to capture 5% of a $31 billion market, and if the drug is truly successful, realistically, they may achieve a higher market share. Not to mention that MindMed's own estimation of the market size is $42 billion, not $31 billion. Though I do want to stress again that these are very rough estimates. Hell, I'll call them guesstimates. And more importantly, they rely on 18MC completing their clinical trials and actually being an effective treatment. So that's it for today. As you can tell, I'm extremely excited by the 18MC opportunity, and I will keep a very close eye on this to bring you all the updates. And this is just one of MindMed's potentially revolutionary medicines, and we will be making videos on all the other projects in the future. If this is something that interests you, don't forget to like and subscribe to not miss any updates. So this is the part of the video where I throw it over to the community. Do you think 18MC has the potential to solve the opioid epidemic, or am I being too bullish? Let us know in the comments. This is James from the Psychedelic Investor, signing out. I'll see you next time.